is Rania Cornelia. I am 17 years old. I am a high school student. And first of all, it's such an honor to be here. Thank you for Numbers ID for uh, calling me in. So today, uh, today's theme, as you all know, is education for diversity. Uh, today I will be specifically talking about the importance of online education, videos for millennials to understand the world and the nature of reality. So uh, first of all, I'll give a little background. You guys heard a little bit that last October, I joined a global competition called the Junior Breakthrough Challenge. Uh, so we had to make a, a five minute video uh, about like science, a challenging topic in science or mathematics. Uh, this competition was held by Facebook and Khan Academy, if you guys know. Uh, out of 3,000 students, I got into the semifinalist, which is top 30. And this was actually my, uh, my submission. Have you ever lay down in bed before going to sleep, then suddenly out of nowhere thinking, what would the world be like in the future? Followed by an existential crisis? That's me. But no worries. Today, I'll be discussing a theory in the field of cosmology, the expanding space-time theory. But before we start talking about the future, let's head back to the past. When Einstein published special relativity in 1905, then general relativity in 1916, Russian cosmologist Alexander Friedman was inspired and came up with the expanding space-time theory under the paradigm of relativity, solving Einstein's field equations. Friedman theorized his model under two standards, the Big Bang theory and the steady state theory. But the steady state theory was then tossed out after the discovery of CMB, cosmic microwave background, in 1965. Is that enough for the background check? Let's head back to the future. Let's start with the basics before we go further. What is space-time? Space-time is a concept where time and space, temporal and spatial, are fused together, creating a four-dimensional continuum. But we might think that time and space are totally different things and they're separate. But actually, they're not. Let me show you. Let's head back to my room. Over here is the space-time model. Space is the x-axis and time is the y-axis. Pretend that this little figurine is me. I'm here right now. If I'm standing still for an amount of time, the graph goes up as time ticks, but my space doesn't change. But what if I walked? See how I'm moving, making both changes in space and time because I'm moving in space as time ticks. So now let's start with the EST model because we already know what space time is. So the EST model has two postulates. The first postulate is that space time equivalence applies. Here's the keyword, symmetry. In the EST model, the world is expanding in scale as well as time. Supported by Hubble's redshifting discovery that galaxies are moving further apart in a constant rate, time should expand as well, growing slower. Imagine, this is the size of our solar system today, but in the future, it might look like this. As planetary bodies, we move further from the sun, and our orbital period will be longer in distance. Without the EST model, it would imply that the Earth would take less time to complete an orbit. But with the EST theory, the time for Earth to complete an orbit will remain the same because time stretches along as well as space. The second postulate is that all measured speed of light is constant relative to the observers. You see, all freely moving particles that are slower than the speed of light will decrease over time. Any moving particles that move at the same rate as speed of light and light itself will remain as a constant and will not decrease over time. This means the calculation of distances using the speed of light, for example measuring stars, will remain the same. The EST model also points out that this second right now relates to the seconds before and the future. Here's a slinky. Pretend this is time. A second right now could be this long. But in the future, it could be this long. As time progresses, each second grows bigger each time at the same rate. We call it an exponential or geometric expansion. But here's the big question. Is the EST model even true? It's not 100% verified and there are still some doubts. But here are some evidences that support this theory. The first one is cosmic drag. Cosmic drag is when particles gradually move away from each other as space-time expands and lose their kinetic energy, like positive mass particles decreasing in velocity and photons redshifting. Also known as cosmic scatter, it is easily calculated using Hubble's law. The formula is V, recessional velocity, is equal to Hubble's constant times distance. As you can see, Hubble's data lacked, which concluded a very different result of the Hubble constant rather than NASA and Planck mission's current study on the true Hubble constant. With these particles gradually moving away, this gives evidence to the reason why galaxies are formed in a spiral shape. Particles in the radius near the core will have much more kinetic energy than the ones further away, making the ones closer move faster, then followed gradually by the ones further. Stars further then have lower angular momentum, causing them to spiral towards the center. 
Another evidence is the activity of our satellite, the moon. The moon goes further away from Earth at about 3.8 centimeters a year, calculated with the lunar laser ranging equipment tested annually. The last one is that the rate of expansion has been calculated. Thanks to NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope, our universe expands at a rate of 74.3 plus or minus 2.1 kilometers per second per megaparsec. A megaparsec is roughly 3 million light years. Overall, I think this theory should be put into huge consideration and be studied further because clearly there are many supporting evidences that put this theory closer to an approval. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. See you next time. So expansion is real. It is real, it is real, it is real. Yeah. Uh, so that was the video I put for my, uh, for my uh, submission. And so why did I show this is because did you learn something new? I, did you guys learn something new? I hope you guys did. Uh, because these are the tools we need in this modern day era. And what do you mean by that is that today we all know that we have these everything. This, you guys have your smartphones, you have your tablets, you have your cameras and your laptops. And what can you do with it? So uh, my mom once told me, and it's always stuck in my head, that uh, don't let technology take over your life, but take over the technology we have and use it for good purposes. And what are the good purposes? Well, we can create. Wow, that happened. Uh, we can create because it's accessible. When we create content, uh, we, uh, anyone can access it. We have the internet. We are all interconnected. And we should be curious to find knowledge on many more topics other than the ones we are taught in school. Because not only that, uh, there are many subjects that we are interested in ourselves that we want to learn further. Uh, these are the examples that I personally uh, see. Uh, Khan Academy, I learn. Uh, I learn some uh, my school stuff. Uh, crash course, also it covers philosophy, economics, and even more like sciences. And they're very resourceful and they're very interesting, which engages a lot of students today uh, to learn about many other topics. And space time is the same as crash course, but it focuses more on astronomy. So what we also need to learn other than outside school is that uh, we need to learn how, how to handle your taxes, how do you handle your banking, and how do you handle insurance? Because personally, I don't know. But I'm also like very worried. What do, what do I do when I'm like an adult? Like I need someone to teach me that. We don't have it in school. We should. And that's why I think uh, we could use these kind of ideas uh, in online education. And we can create content, then uh, students and even millennials can learn how to handle everyday life. And it gives us a better grasp in handling and understanding life. And when we have an understanding uh, and knowledge on social issues, and avoid, and it can avoid false information and create misunderstanding between individuals. What do I mean by that? Is that with, let's say, online videos, we can, as Indonesia, we can make videos about what is Indonesia, what is our culture, what is our politics today, what is our economy today, and then anyone in the world can access these information and they can know what Indonesia is. Oh, Indonesia is like this. Oh, it's very diverse. And uh, other countries can also do that. And with that, we can uh, we can learn about each other, and it gives us uh, an opportunity to understand each other, and like avoid false information that can lead, if you say this globally, you can say uh, we can prevent world conflict and you know between nations. And the world will be connected when every, indi when every individual has a good grasp of world knowledge. Uh, so it's basically, we're trying to get everyone into the same page to understand what is the world today. So instead of um, so instead of misunderstanding and talking bad things about each other, we actually like appreciate each each individual and each um, and each nation. Therefore, education and diversity. And so, in conclusion, what do you want to know? Spare a few minutes in your life and learn something new every day with the power of technology. Go on Google, go on YouTube, go anywhere, and you can find that someone will at least write or create content that is related to what you're thinking and what you want to know. 
or do you have something to share to the world? Create something and give answers to curious individuals out there. My name is Rhonda Cornelia. Thank you very much.